Today we're going to be doing some more calibration with a bootstrap power calculation. We're going to be answering a fundamental question, what is the sample size that we should sample? And this goes all the way back to the two fundamental assumptions of bootstrap. Okay, so let's assume we have a population. So we've got some sort of population. We take a sample from this population. Uh, the sample size is in. And from this sample, we get some goodies. So we go ahead and we get theta hat is greater than zero. So in fact, theta hat is one. So maybe we're doing the sample in the population of the United States and maybe theta is the correlation between smoking and mortality. So we figure out, hey, there's, there's a positive correlation. That's interesting, we should tell people. However, we find that zero is in our confidence interval. So what does that mean? So our confidence interval might be negative point. 6 all the way to 2.2. So notice our confidence interval, our 90% confidence interval, or 95% confidence interval contains 0. Not only does it contain 0, it contains negative, uh, or point, uh, negative point 0.6. So this means smoking could have be inversely correlated with mortality. This means the more you smoke, the longer you live. Mm, so that's no good. So what do we do? Well, we know that we can reduce the size of the confidence interval by increasing the size of our sample size. So we go ahead and do calibration on sample size. So we test lots of sample sizes. We go ahead, we test our original sample size. We test twice the original sample size. We test thrice the original sample size. And we're testing to see, testing to see what? We want to know the probability that zero will be in our confidence interval. A little bit different from what we did last time, but still equally important. So we want to know how big of an in do we need to get zero outside of our confidence interval. Okay, so what would we do? Well, ideally what we would do is we take lots and lots of samples, in this case in samples from our population, and use them to go ahead and construct lots of confidence intervals. And we test whether each of these confidence intervals contains zero or not. So for each sample size n, sample size 2n, sample size 3n, we take n samples from capital N, samples from our population, and we test what the probability that 0 is in the confidence interval. So for example, for n, it might be 0.4. For 2n, it might be 0.2. For 3n, it might actually be 0.03. So maybe we just need to do thrice the sample size and we'll be good. But what's the problem? So the problem with this is we're taking in samples from our population, three times in samples from our population, and that's incredibly expensive. So we want to get away with doing just one. What do we do? I almost don't want to say, you already know what we do. We go ahead and we apply the plug-in principle. We take in samples from our sample, and these are bootstrap samples, and we construct confidence intervals for each of these bootstrap samples, and we test whether zero is in this confidence interval. We do this in times three, if we're testing three sample sizes, times. And we get the probability that zero is in our confidence interval or an approximation to it, an estimation of it, by taking these bootstrap samples and averaging. So for example, the bootstrap samples might give us 0.3, so 30% of the time we'll have zero in our confidence interval if we just use our normal sample size. Maybe we get 0.05. So in this case, 5% of the time, if we use twice the sample size, we'll get zero in our confidence interval. So we want to do a little better. So we might get 0.01. So a very tiny, you know, 0.1% of the time, we'll get zero in a confidence interval if we use thrice our sample size. So we go back to the drawing board. We get thrice the sample size number of people. So we took one sample of n. We go ahead and we take another sample of 3n. So we end up with a sample of 4n. We end up having to sample 4n people, which is expensive, but at least we now know. And we likely get a confidence interval that does not contain zero. OK, so now we know how to choose n. Uh, there's a couple problems here. So one, the problem that we discussed last time, in order to construct confidence intervals, we need to take bootstrap samples from bootstrap samples. So if we take bootstrap samples from bootstrap samples, we'll end up doing a computation time of something like n squared, which is a lot. The second problem with this is that we need to initially sample the population. We need to know something about the population initially in order to figure this out. So we need to have at least one dud sample in order to figure out what the appropriate sample size is. So hopefully this has given you a lot of intuition on how we choose n using bootstrapping. 
Next time we're going to be doing another thing, which is how we choose capital in using bootstrapping. So bear with me.